Hello, I'm Steve Mason, and welcome to the feature podcast for Hudson Hawk. And before this, a press player, Paul Ray, wants to tell you that he's got peanut M&Ms. Paul Ray's not here. I am pressing play now. Right, this film gets a lot. This film gets a lot of love and a lot of hate at the same time. Um, I'm a bit shocked actually, because I only watched this last night on my uh, other television, and it wasn't so letterboxed anyway. But take a press there off there. I'm recording this on my brand new shotgun microphone. I've got the dead cat on as well, just to test it out. Could completely goon it, but having this now set up means I don't need to drain my battery out. And podcasts can be about any film now, so they can be like over an hour and a half. Because I've been sticking to an hour and a half, and I'll shut up about the letterbox because the horsey of old school TriStar is running to the screen, Pegasus there, in the big screen. So. As I say, this film gets a lot of love or a lot of hate. Some people haven't seen it. Some people say it and go, what the fuck? And he was just keep what the fuck did you lend us? And this actually comes with an amazing commentary by the director as well, because this film does have a lot of um, history about problems. And uh, as we get uh, Conrad somebody, somebody Conrad, it's the voice of uh, Rocky and Bullwinkle introducing it. You kind of know from the start, it's the guy of Donkey. No, no, the Vinci, the guy in the donkey, is just the guy in the donkey. Uh, <laughs> straight away, you got you kind of know that so much off as soon as it starts. Um, this was filmed in Italy, and some of the props here, especially the Bigfoot, hey, um, is just a um, leftover prop from years ago that the director seen and thought he wanted in the film, and that foot right there. Um, a very interesting comedy. I've watched it two nights in a row. I'm going to remember bits and pieces, but I'm also going to share my love for this film because I seen this at a young age. Now, Bruce Willis had been massively popular for Moonlighting, and it's a TV show I've never seen, but you know, he had a couple of films like Blind Date and stuff. Then Die Hard came along and hit massively big. Um, everything he was doing at the time, the Hudson Hawk is like Bruce Willis's um, pet project. Um, this got put on hold because of Die Hard 2 and also Mere Mortals, a summit, Mortal Summit where he was a star alongside his wife at the time, Debbie Moore. Um, starts off with the best, uh, <laughs> the director talks about a lot of the actors, how um, the guy who plays the Pope and the guy who plays Leonardo da Vinci here. He took the casting director's word that they were the best lookalikes who can act, even though the guy's wearing a fake beard. And I'm sure the beard changes from one scene to the next because some of this was filmed in Italy, some of it was filmed in, I think, Romania, no, Hungaria, no, Budapest, no, or maybe it's Budapest. Budapest sounds familiar. Uh, and there's a lot of special effects here by Industrial Light and Magic. This film is one of the very first films as well to have um, wire removal as well. So yeah, I, I took in a lot of information. Now I'm uploading the Lost Boys of Tribe in the background. That's um, <coughs> time to do this podcast. Uh, we'll have to shift in a minute to set it away. Um, but yeah, it's great. Even in the reflection there, it's a great. There's a lot of money spent on this, you know. Um, but yeah, did a lot of different um, approaches, a lot of different angles. Joel Shuva, I mean, it's, it's Joel Silver, the same uh, producer as die hard richard a. grant i'll talk about him when he appears as well um but yeah starts off you know has this kind of it's a big budget you know it's a big budget that machine actually worked as well um let's see Leonardo da vinci has created a gold making machine You know, you just abandon it. It's like Bruce Willis, a podcast, maybe it's Bruce Willis, Striking Distance. I love that film as well. But, you know, I call him Paycheck Willis now because I'm such a big fan of him from then. But he seems to pop up in everything now, you know what I mean? Um, he's getting his bad as Nicolas Cage. Frank Salone, he's a mint guy to follow on Instagram. Um, especially when he goes for a tour around a video shop in LA. He's quite funny. I had no idea it was Professor Sloan's uh, brother till years ago. And then when you know it, you go, why did you never see that coming? It's not like the Sloans have been in a movie. It's not like the Baldwin syndrome. There's a lot of masculine things going on in this movie. There's a horsey there, but you just see the guy in the background. There's a lot of stuff going on in the background. 
Yeah, I'm sure his beard has changed. Yeah, so let's need a shift a second and prep uploading Lost Boys. Do do do. A couple of clicks as Leonardo takes. <laughs> See, you don't get jokes like this now. The Mona Lisa. <laughs> You, did, you know, this film was ahead of its time, but again, it's it's meant to be the way it is. A lot of people just think it's badly made, but it's apparently it's meant to be like that. Continuity goes out the window and all kinds of stuff. I <laughs> see B is totally different. <laughs> Mark Emerson, who I talk about quite a lot, um... It's just bought the Lost Boys again. He didn't have it. <laughs> so the magnificent flying machine. Some great uh, camera work, artwork here as well. Um, again, you've got to think this is a 1991 film, you know. <laughs> Assassin's Creed, anyone? It's got to be the same score as who did Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. It's got that whole like orchestral thing there. And it dissolves there. It's even a morph, you know, camera morph into a. And this is this is art of filming. So you got Sing Sing here, um, the real Sing Sing. Inside you got a completely different uh, prison. the Mona Lisa thing there, little hidden jokes. There's a lot of hidden joke things in the background here as well. <laughs> There's a lot of, I mean, that guy there, he's a famous um, second unit director as well as actor. There's a lot of people then on this. I mean, again, Bruce Willis was just, Die Hard was massive. You know, and this was just after Die Hard 2. I mean, Die Hard 2 was that popular and that fast track. They had to fake all the snow pretty much in Die Hard 2. <laughs> See, when I was going bold, um, I never risked what he's going for there. I've just been bold since I went right bold. You know, Willis wasn't scared. You know, until he went twelve. He went. Uh, what did he? What did he? He did a uh, fifth element. Then he went totally bald for twelve monkeys. Even a bit of Robin Hood, like little jazz swing going on here. See you later, Eddie. Still, you don't really know what you're in for, you know, it just could be like a crying cat, though. <laughs> and then kiss the ground. Can't imagine looking at them apartments burning and looking across at the prison, that would be grim. Probably give you a good reason to go out to work every day. Oh no, fucking I'll just go move across there, it's free rent. <laughs> this is um, a film I probably want to do a podcast for soon, it's coming to America. And I think I had this tape of television and the F-bombs weren't there until I seen this on DVD. This hasn't seen a release on Blu-ray. I think it deserves one. I think it, I mean, it's filmed really well and it looks really good on blu-ray right there's a cotton new area here um they are literally the the landscape the city backdrop is the same on either side so there's no coverage so they're just driving up wrong the street the other way um the director did that on purpose it, i mean saves a lot of money you don't you know what i mean but um because they, they get a lot of shit they shut down the brooklyn bridge and all sorts they were getting shot by snipers and all this this is what i was talking about with the conspiracy of the movie and here comes one of the inner jokes setting it up now. 
of like cappuccino he wants to have a cappuccino and it's going to be an ongoing thing that he never gets a cappuccino at the time though a cappuccino was a european thing you know people like they were worried that people wouldn't know what a cappuccino was you know what i mean they were taking so much leaps and bounds that we take a, a like a joke now I take for granted really so so yeah this is his best friend who's helping set up a bar and he's walking back into his bar and it's become a players club but by a players club you know upper class club so i'm just trying to um get the lost boys trilogy up I think this is the first podcast I'm going into, knowing that, well, technically, that, you know, it will be developed straight away, but I haven't really got a schedule. I think one of the things I've done is Prentice is about to come out soon. I only got Darkman and Lost Boys, all these podcasts and ones in between, you know, and there's <laughs> comes the next one. There's an armadillo just on the bar there as well. <laughs> You're thinking about someone just shooting the fucking... <laughs> That fucking jazz score is really funny as well. Can we in there? Is Frank Stallone? and stuff there's cactuses everywhere you look at the shots there there's a stunt coming up here that just looks brutal Totally sells it like the sound effect, it's just a brutal. Yeah, sorry, I keep moving now. Some of this next one. Fuck hell. Trying to get him to do a job straight away. So you still think you're in for a cat burglar, who? So this must be the um, Captain Bob Steelwell. There was a lot of uh, backstory dropped as well. There's a thing about Little Eddie, which I'll talk about as well. Um, but again, like you know, like you see heist movies, these guys are just going straight into it. back in the days in the cab bill before videos we don't have to worry about CCTV now man you see all these films now and it's like oh let's be tricky and let's not show you everything we could do to find you but let's give you a really good scare like even go to a cash machine someone's phone <laughs> maybe more of an f-bomb like you know the uh, little knuckle there Things going on there. I was t sorry. I'm sitting right across the far side of the room, trying to raise my voice a bit. I was going to try and think about doing a podcast for Dreamhouse. I watched that last night. And it was really cool. Hi, uh, this film shot for a hundred days. That's a long shoot. That's like three months, just over three months. That's a long time, man. Pizza. 
everything I see is making us feel hungry. Italian food, pasta, yeah. pizza. I was going to order a takeaway. Pool cleans. <laughs> Still, though, this film isn't really. It's not quite yet warning you what it's in for or what you're in for until you know it's got a little um free stooges stuff coming up you know Lauren and hardy especially this bit coming up here <laughs> it's not just that it lands on there perfect it's the ding noise as well it's just like all right They're pretty, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's not like anyone maybe is watching. Again, no, there's no green screen there. Like, that's, you know, that's New York, and that's like, look at the coverage, man, looking up, looking down. They're stunt guys, and, you know what I mean? That's like. Big budget, you know, that's where your budget goes. I mean, they're in New York there, soon they'll be in Italy and all over the place. And Good, Yogi. <laughs> I'm wearing my girl. Sorry, moving around. And the blue chair. It doesn't look the comfortable chair to be sitting on. It's a hell of a lot of wongs in the phone book. See, even that there, that's an amazing joke, but it could be quite offensive, <laughs> I imagine. I don't even want to know where they got the um, skateboards from, but um, there we go. <laughs> Creeping along the skateboards. It's a hell of a lot of wongs. So it's quite a nifty idea though for the time. And of a film I like at the time, what was really peaking in the video and video it's video surveillance, video surveillance, video video surveillance, that's the word I'm looking for. Um Rising Sun. That was quite interesting, you know, for the time how you do it. Even the one called Silver. Shark skateboard. Uh, I think this is where you realise the film's about to go completely different. It turns into a musical. Bruce Willis, Bruno sings again and all that. He was big and was uh, singing as well. And it fits in there. It's how they keep the time. It's but again, though people like what the fuck. Right, it adds the character, you know. Swing on the stone. Need to skip there as well. Why would you have it? <laughs> Why would you have one of them swinging doors in that hallway? 
especially with like a museum trying to shift stuff. It's a big dial laughingly. Start breaking out in a full singing. <laughs> I'm sure them two guys, I think one's Bruce Willis's pair stylist, I think. A lot of horses going along here. Again, it's got that whole end of the musical thing, you know, like, and then it turns in the three stooges here with the whole double map ahead, even the noise. <laughs> Fucking fun handcuffs. Get up, you're embarrassing me. You know, you know, like they broke in there and have got gloves or anything on the glass and that. You think, okay. See, this is where they like people just realise what the hell is this happening, and then people are just going to wonder what the fuck's about what's just happened. Um, real stunt as well. Come on, Slim Jim. Big stunt on the ascenders, and both of them crash with the canopy. The film cuts scenes and Bruce Willis lands randomly in the chair in someone's apartment. But it's not like a cut scene, it's delivery done like that because he's still trying to shake off the effect of the fall. And I think this is where people went, what the fuck? The butler there is. Plot thickens. Hey, Mr. French. <laughs> Drink. That's pretty, uh, it's pretty brutal, pretty bloody. Knife definitely wouldn't work, like, but you know. Dog bark next door. <laughs> Just look at it, but they said there's an armadillo again. I've never noticed ever watching this. Again, here comes the next cafe machine. Da Vinci.
blue cactus as well. What's that about? There's a bottle of Malibu, you know, it's all fuzzy in the background. Back in the um, auction house, selling horses everywhere. <laughs> Bruce Willis a bit of pimp. A very famous actor there on the stage. And Andy McDowell makes her appearance. Andy McDowell. It's the guy I'm thinking of, isn't it? Let's have a quick look. I remember the last thing I seen Annie McDowell in, anyway, so. <laughs> Just typed in IMDb and, IMDb, and the first thing that pops up is. Um, Bruce Willis in the air vent and is that the first look at the ca uh, first look at the candy bars as well. It's fucking see that's when you know you're in for a bizarre time when the fucking bad guys are called the candy bars. Um He should pop up. Uh, the auctioneer John Salvabitz, he's in Back to the Future, Star Trek, um, oh, he's still, oh he hasn't been in that amazing, I think it's because he's in like Lethal Weapon and stuff like that, he's just a familiar face, he looks like Michael Gambon but it's not Michael Gambon, if you know what I mean, she's not very famous at all. Bruce Willis. Twenty million dollars. And here comes Richard E. Grant. Now I've actually worked with Richard E. Grant before. Um, I worked on a music video for The Chemist called This City. We shot it in Manchester at the Big Fish. Um, concept of the music video was band playing and there's a guy going around and he finds he's jacked in the a hard wire and he spends like the video like trying to crawl back and trace where he's from and all that and it's Richard E. Grant and when I was there, I mean he was a lovely guy, um, proper pro, um, I spent most of the day with a band downstairs filming the band along with Mark McQueen while upstairs the official director was directing Richard E. Grant and a lot of the music video was filmed uh, with CGI in mind so check out This City The Chemist for the Richard E. Grant music video and he was, he was cool but I was just like he's a lot to knock and you know obviously Richard E. Grant's been in a lot of stuff you know a lot of stuff he's a brilliant actor but like I know it cuts and hawks everyone proud moment again you either love it or you hate it Dave Tall very tall guy and he comes saying Pegasus from the start of the movie which is in in joke the Tristar Fucking knack as well. Imagine getting upcut by a horse. Oh. <laughs> this is where they had the Brooklyn Bridge shut down for um, five nights, and people were actually fucking shooting at them and stuff. It's fucking crazy, man. Fucking horrible but funny. 
Fuck the syringes in the eyes. And this is a brilliant stunt as well, you know. Pull along the Brooklyn Bridge on a gurney. That random jump there as well. Catching a menthol cigarette. Girl here is a playmate of the year. Say they'd listen to the comedy. Yeah, it's a pretty good stunt. <laughs> Again, they'll throw on toll booth. Apparently, there's no toll booth on the Brooklyn Bridge. Um, So like <laughs> this was yeah, push for this gun totally crazy. I think though no, I think Bruce Willis, you know, because he wrote the story and I think he loves it and loves the film. You know, he, he's having so much fun in this you can see it in that scene there, like yeah. But again, going back to how mental the film is, <laughs> it's coming off that into meeting the uh, the candy bars, who are all pretty famous in their own right. His Kit Kat, who has frog written on his hand there. He went on to be in like Kiss, Kiss of Death, and obviously CSI Miami. <laughs> My Snickers. I didn't get hers as a kid because we didn't have them over there. <laughs> Back up. This guy here is um, he's in Batman um, Returns. He he has quite a few. And Butterfinger. Um, I mean, he's got to be on steroids. He's a big guy, um, and she's Corbin, yeah. The thing is about this guy as well, he's the leader of the gang, but all his characters are like, like based on it. There's a lot of his earlier films, this film was based on as well. That's where a lot of the inspiration comes. Now this bit's been heavily cut because there's a bit here about why he's going to kill him and kill him that. Um, is it, Hudson Hawk used to have a monkey called Little Eddie, who this character killed years ago, and he's pissed about it. And there's a bit later on with it, but obviously it was completely cut out. But that's why he got so much hate from because he killed his pet monkey, Little Eddie. It's a tremendous actor, though. In fact, he's been dead maybe for 15 years now. It's, that's scary. Box coming in the background, seeing foreshadowing. No, expect me to fall for that. He's got a proper glass jaw, Hudson Hall, for a superhero in his own right. <laughs> Now they're in Rome. Uh, the guy who plays Butterfinger, um, he's in that film, Mask Two or Black Mask Two, the one with Van Dam. He plays one of the wrestlers where him and Rob Van Dam turn into mutants, and it's like, what? <laughs> Again, the score—it's like a really big budget score as well.
the colour same again though, finding that location, look out the window and that being there, no green screen or anything like that. That's mental man. Size that limousine man. It's nice that like. <laughs> it's like the fucking fax comes in one side and goes out the other. <laughs> Just like spoof gigs, like, spoof gags like that in the background. I don't even know how we ended up getting Richard A. Grant in the music video. I mean, didn't have a lot of budget for it. I'm sure it had something to do with the record label of Banner, so it's like favour of a favour. Mussolini's um <laughs> Mussolini's uh, building. Oh <laughs> club. The fucking naked men wrestle, arm wrestle in the background. Into that fucking evil villain. Definitely where they came off the idea of a pinky in the brain from me. <laughs> Even that was risky back then, man. Painting in the background, I don't think you know, really like it. Rewind out there, I'm sure it was like some kind of picture of them, maybe. Pictures, man. There's pictures like I, I, I'll give them credit. <laughs> like the <fuck. laughs> that's uh, there's that picture again in the background. Even the dogs involved in that's creepy. Yeah, the whole uh, <laughs> dominatrix thing that's pretty funny as well. But I was just about to say, at least they didn't use like stills from the film, there's actually alternative angles. Iganook. Even the locations, man, it's fucking awesome. Actually, uh, uh, Annie is at this moment of time in Italy. I uh, kind of, she's probably around here. I'm sure she's in Pisa. <laughs> uh, she got back from America. She was here for a couple of days, and she's off to Pisa. I was just like, you're not much in Hudson Hawk. How weird is that? Yeah, it was cool because last time I was doing a podcast, I wasn't sure. I, I joined the Monarch. I'm interested about doing that. Maybe it's next 
Um, Ghostbusters, I'd watched and listened to the commentary of Ghostbusters. And I was literally going to make Ghostbusters my next trilogy. Then I was a bit shocked to realise that Ghostbusters 2 doesn't have a, um, a commentary. So, I don't know. I think I'm going to stay away from trilogies because I've now got two trilogies in the bag when I'm doing this. So, it's been cool. I like, I like revisiting these old films. I like making this kind of content. You know, it's... I did buy Resident Evil 7 and I've uh, been playing on that. But I'm enjoying um, being creative and um, again make them all content poor teddy bear like she's a pretty evil looking kid like isn't she you're embarrassing you couldn't I want to look like because it's got a very die hard score Cast and crew. Um, produced by Cast by Colin Art. Sound department, yeah. Piss off phone. Music department. Just trying to find out who. Film Aaron Curry, original music by Matt Clearman. Matt Clearman is known for Lethal Weapon, yep, yeah, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. It's the same composer as Lethal Weapon, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. Um, score to like American Idol. Um, Assassins, that's a really good film. So it looks like he did uh, Last Action Hero. Yep, I can hear elements of that in this as well. Um, Hudson Hawk, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves he did. He did Life Force. He didn't do Die Hard, but you can kind of see what I'm on about with there. Especially the link to Joel Silver as well. Um, but yeah, he did Jack. Um, yeah, he's been a big worker there. There's another guy credited as the composer, who is Robert Kraft, who is known for Hudson Hawk I Robot. Let's see if he is the guy from. If there's any connection to Die Hard. Um, something about Mary Bro Broken Arrow. Um, Hudson Hawk, Little Mermaid he's done for, oh, Return of Bruno, Bruce Willis TV movie, that's the, uh, and Bruno sings again, so, yeah, it's definitely something familiar about his music, and then, Jesus start talking now, yes sir, <laughs> that's just so weird, It's a brilliant location shots in this thing. I'm getting requests now for podcasts. I've just been asked if uh, uh, you know, <clears throat> sorry, I just refrain. Just getting asked now to do requests and requests in Breakfast Club. For that one or the back burner, I think. Like, I'm trying to do like obscure ones. <laughs> that phone box just looks like someone out of Streets of Rage, like going to drop kick for a fucking apple on a plate. Five, five, five.
Captain Bob steering wheel. <laughs> I'm trying to think, you know, the film that Danny Oro was in and um it's when he, he cuts back him later on and he's dead on the floor but <laughs> and uh, this uh, is the first time you really see Kit Kat as an impersonator as well. Trying to just think of that movie. Yeah, I think it's just like a guest cameo and it somewhat goes wrong. In Leon, it's not Leon like. He's still working hard. Um, it's not City Hall, although I need that for my John Cusack collection. Uh, so Hudson Hawk. I think this is where Kit Kat appears. Uh, Looking at number 11, that's what he's in. It's an amazing film, that Looking at number 11. <laughs> we blow up space shuttles for breakfast. Gonna message up Killian Hedge. Go. What do you want? What do you want, Killian? <laughs> right, Killian's got a new book out for the Lost Boys. <laughs> this is book plug, Killian. <laughs> it's a totally different expression of what he was pulling just before he looked around there. So the director of the comedy was on about this here, and he was explaining, he was a little bit worried that people wouldn't realise what he was doing. Um, I've always known what he was doing, you know, as a kid, the whole laser beams and the whole using the glasses, uh, the mirrors to reflect it back to its light source and all that, and this weird measurement ruler. Especially with the cable, you know, it can get. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it. I mean, I can guess. It's the whole like it's got electric to it, whatever. Again, great photography. <laughs> Pastor enough, I'll get off. Oh. Sketty bolognese. I'm hungry. <laughs> Stop it. I'm trying to think what I've got in to eat. Cross of glass. Um, the, the blue wire. So I'm going to go to the trivia on IMDb they've got. Goat cheese pizza is also mentioned in the last point. Scout. I, I'm not going to uh, go into this. I'm going to keep on going without looking at other people's facts and opinions. But yeah, I did watch Last Boy Scout um, not that long ago. I was thinking that would be a pretty cool podcast, but. Fishing. Oh, 
you not do that before you? That, I, I could just see I've been so hard to do. Climb up a nylon rope like that. It's all relocations, this as well. Even the fucking even the Pope is watching a horsey at the horse. You got the Pope bagging on the fucking PCR. It's just like, yeah. Okay, that was head that way. Hot shots was about this time. Sorry about my phone. Hey, hey, apology for the big yawn. My God. Horsey. What's <laughs> the hell that fucking drop that way? And then, again, just like, landed like the comedy on there in the flip, it's... And then he jumps up and lands in the seat perfect and it's like you either love it or you hate it. There's no you know what I mean. And the whole <laughs> the flowers, air uh, flowers, the fucking feathers. Ketchup. Ketchup. <laughs> and then the, the, the fucking candy bars are just there waiting for him. Fucking ketchup and a fucking she fucking mind holder. <laughs> you never seen ET ET reference? I mean as well there's a lot more in the dirt. There was a lot more at the time because Nintendo at the time was massive and there was a lot of Nintendo jokes that you missed the first evolution in Nintendo and obviously about this time like the Nintendo uh, SNES was coming out you know. I'm uh, a bit devastated myself for um, not deciding what food I wanted before this podcast. Because once you start a podcast, you're stuck here. <laughs> Although I could edit it, press stop and start. It's not what it's about, though, and it's you're not meant to think about podcasts, especially film podcasts. You just got to roll with it. You know what I mean? I say I was talking to Matty Connors. I was talking about like you want people to get comfortable with your personality and your voice and all that and you know you love for films it should show through you know so that kind of thing at some point stop starting oh, I don't like that bit like let's watch 15 minutes right uh, I've got to, uh, I've wrote something better no none of that shit you just need a fucking winger Over this new shotgun mic's good. Me and Jack were up at um, Sycamore Gap filming Jack's promo the video. Um, if you follow me and Jack in anywhere, there's different videos for different stuff. Um, and uh, although I was able to digitally manipulate and drop the wind 
even though it wasn't that windy the uh, other microphone I've got very directional and stuff like that I mean sorry if the podcast could just point to me but I was like fuck this like the wind you know what I mean you've got the wind settings on the cameras and all that kind of shit but you're like right okay it's not like it was a windy day so let's get right new microphone on the cards definitely Fucking butterfinger looks massive in that car. I was starting to watch um, Die Hard 2 last night as well, just for you know. Yeah. He still has to go his cappuccino. He's out again. The location again from the start there as well. God, we will, aye, we will, be, well, but we are starting to roll down into the back end of the film, aren't we? There's a lot to come, like, but I'm sure this is in Budapest. Sorry, phone. Purpose he didn't. Um, it's Mr. Jack and movie group. So this could set off a chain reaction. Me messaging um, Jack back here. Me Jack's watching Grease, so he's laughing at a picture Paul Ray's put up. I'm not sure. I'm really impressed with this, uh, <laughs> he's Kit Kat now posing at the last. <laughs> there was a, I went to a christening not long back and um, I remember going in and I think I've told this about before, just a confession, we don't have confession over here, over. I don't go to church that often. <laughs> And I just remember, you know, you're going in, you see a church open, and like half of it was kindergarten care, and like a coffee morning cut in half. I mean, I suppose you've got to keep going to keep the churches open, like, but. Uh, like a heavily whole confession thing in America, like. Paul Ray's joined the group as well. That's a lovely shot in the background as well. Uh, Paul Ray's watching Greece. Yeah, um, great. Oh, uh, it looks like Big Dave's messaging now. Oh dear. Um, yeah, Paul Ray's sending pictures through of Greece. Here, it's he started. It's like being at work. It's setting up a skit here as well with the uh, tennis machine. <laughs> Look at the fucking cage above the chair. Now.
Ja, genug. Crazy mad cut look, picking in the crowd, man. Look at the size of his gun. Class and ran the hell and all. Mama Ria Pizzeria. Gold making machine. Dun to dun 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 dun. No edition it is still. <laughs> Apparently, the Jack to Paul. No matter what edition it is, Greece is still gay. <laughs> and Paul Ray started sending more pictures. It's just Jack and Paul having an argument on our movie group. Massive monologue here. Nineteen ninety two, baby. I thought they were going into the last bit of the film, but I was mistaken. Sound effect, man. Even, I mean, even look at that shot there, you've got the candy bars all just sitting, standing, obviously, in the background, really far away. And I mean, the guy was on about it, he was saying that obviously there was sort of longer filming, 
them actors, even though that they would be in all these different locations for so long, they would never know when they were going to be filming. They're always on standby. You know what I mean? You go to set, you get makeup, and you might be shooting something, you might not be shooting something. And when you're not the lead actor and the fucking production doesn't go around you, especially on the call sheet day, you know what I mean? It's tough going. Like, oh yeah, what's he doing? You rehearse and rehearse and you get the scene, you're like, eh, what? <laughs> but yeah, it's, uh, again though, it's what acting is though, travelling, bediums and, you know, seeing the countries. I love male bond. That's a fucking mental fall, that like. Oof. Bruce Willis was injured on in this scene as well. His face smashed off the camera and that shut down production for two years. Well, this one of these shots here. I remember when I was playing a police officer and I was lying on the floor and um, the actress had to reach down and grab the gun. Um, I could, no, gra grab a phone from my pocket. I was lying on the floor. And she whipped up the uh, pendulum weight of the uh, machine gun around me um, shoulder. Came up and smacked straight in the face. <laughs> you know, I'm so sorry as the accident happened. Like, I mean, I didn't flinch, you know what I mean? You meant to be lying dead on the floor. So it's, you know, it's a, uh, accidents do happen, right? Even there, there's a stunt fear, driving a van in the back of there, simple thing, but precision driving, because it's like narrow as fuck. All ruined. Definitely got a bit of diehard view, you know. She loves him already. Anyone who likes Assassin's Creed as well, like, especially the ones with Ezio with Del Toro, um, you should definitely watch this. Not for the Assassin's Creed side of it, you know, more like just the, you know, the the like backstory and the, the, the content of the Italian history. Again though, no, it's a location, you know what I mean, it's awesome. Little, 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 little. Well, you can watch the tra you can watch the movie of Hudson Hawk for two pound forty nine. You can watch it legally, um, which has been on YouTube for a full year of fifteen thousand views. It's why a full year it should be taken off, man? I did not know Oliver Harper and Duncan Casey had done a commentary for uh, Hudson Hawk, and I haven't listened to that, so there we go, that's interesting. So there is an audience out there for Hudson Hawk. Um, I'm trying to send my friend the trailer. This Hudson Hawk gets shot down. Get off the couch. Yeah, 
Dirty ugly. <laughs> Fucking pitch voice is meant. So yeah, this is probably the downfall of the movie. Not the downfall, but more like going in the last hurdle. Hi, uh, so me, me thing at the moment is like, <laughs> this is the thing with the paralyzed. Try and watch a new movie and then try and watch an old movie for a commentary. Ah, yeah, yeah, this is probably the director's on about how, like, the, you might have had them up until this point. Yeah. Look at come up with nose. Long job done. We talk for that off. Three bits. Ah. Ah. Take that. What the fuck? <laughs> Sits there perfectly. Falls perfectly in perfect position. That guy, that guy actor is a pretty big guy, like, he's got to be in the uh, six sixes or something, six sevens. Been a bit of equipment here. <laughs> it's a bomb stuck to his head. <laughs> That's a very quick too much. <laughs> it's just a little massive leap there trying to get off his head. a couple of um, explosions where they've actually used puppets there, uh, that was a puppet of him there, it was a puppet of the auctioneer at the start, right, earlier on. Now this, <laughs> he's fucking in, he's fucking full on camel gear. He's, he's dropping the iPhone as well, that's pretty cool. Um, I'm going like a dolphin here as well, that's um, very bold for the actress I think. You got Richard E. Grant there pulling on the quickie thing, the butler's trying to keep a straight face. 
Of James Gordon's John around as a fucking super ninja. Super ninja, super troll guy. Super hard. Oh, it's getting late now, guys. <laughs> fucking dolphins. <laughs> Look at that man, even though the whole like one hand up then the other hand up like it's gonna be one person but it's two people. Bruce Willis with that fucking goofy look on his face. It's a lovely sunset now. It gets very dark here as well, very quickly but you know, it's a film. <laughs> you must put it on. Kit Kat as a, a statue. Double cross and kills. He lost all his cards. Bombs they are. And now we're going to where the grand finale uh, musical. Fire in a fucking rocket launcher. I think that's the only bit where it's really rejected that bit there, the guy flies across, it looks like it is and paused a little bit. Even this is a really good stunt though. Actors in the foreground, big explosion. Some guys tend to fall. Bruce Willis obviously blocking out with a crash mat is, but oh, you feel sorry for Butterfinger here because he is a little bit. <laughs> See how many bombs are there? An explosion is just running in the background.
<laughs> he turns up the kung fu on him. Definitely wasn't James there, was it? <laughs> and he comes to slapstick comedy. Butler's being shot in the throat. <laughs> Look at him still going there. Where's he taking? He's about not to see you. He looks like he's a Van Damme. And he's all dressed up. And he jumps off. Now there's a cut scene here. As he lands on there, you'll notice very quickly in the glass, he's got a picture of little Eddie stuck to his head. And again, that's uh, Hudson Hawk's revenge from killing his favourite monkey. Um, it's the only time you see Little Eddie in the movie. So we see Grant escapes. He's up for a very glorious death in a minute. Butler's out. And there's that lady still stuck to his head there, he had a quick look. And a great practical explosion here coming up. Apparently as well, the guy who sold him the car for the film was very proud of his car and had no idea it was <laughs> gonna suffer that fate in the movie. But that's just Hollywood for you that. I was watching um, Stay Push Marshmallow Man when they couldn't get the right size and they eventually found like a um, to scale ratio of a uh, police car and they followed all around California Toys R Us and bought up all the um, models and then just took that car and built and designed other cars around it all just for like Stay Push to be walking around Excuse me for purple. That random guy along with this uh, whole headset thing going on. <laughs> Backhand, yeah. Kind of weird Rubik's Cube really in it. What's coming up 10 o'clock? We might be leaving Resident Evil tonight. Get too carried away with that game. podcast is closing to an end
wishful thinking like in it. What do you want to do, Dave? Eat a microwave sushi in the back of a Cadillac, please. Nigga. Industrial lighting magic, especially of the cauldron. Again, though, for 1982, especially on like this kind of budget movie, to, you know, look. <laughs> I know she's instantly scalded at their gold. Smart, yeah, that computer screen. She's going in the letter cute as well. Oh, this is scary. He becomes gold as well. Why is a guy turned to an Indian then? I get to fit in death though. As well as uh, you know, give him the one line I don't in a happy competition or wherever it is when he gets uh hoofed down here and just shouldn't using the door. They'd put a me back in the cooler. that. And see something about Mary a decade before, almost a decade. You know, the whole like dog going out the window. Glorious fashion. Bamba. Funny. Funny. <laughs> I don't like dog dog deaths in movies, but that's just ridiculously stupidly funny. Should say Grant there, dead, gold, explosion, Oof. massive explosion, and some green screen, blue screen projection. So he's going to get quite a little magical, you know, scorn theme there. The guy on the donkey is just the guy on the donkey. And just like the start of the scene in the movie. He finally going to get his cappuccino. Play Nintendo with him, there you go. You know, watch E.T. with me.
It's a lot of earrings he's got in his ear, but. Airbags. Yeah, I just went and made a movie there as well. <laughs> and he finally gets his cappuccino. She's called Conrad, so or some of Conrad. Set a men's wardrobe for Hudson Hawk by it's a big um got there. James Cobb, Richard E. Grant, um Bird Harris Frank Sloan. Frank Page, Doug, Steve Martin, is it Oak? Yeah. William Conrad is the narrator. Buddy the dog is called Frank Welker as well, it's got two names. So as the uh, end credits roll, I'll probably get a copyright notice for some background audio. Uh, swinging on the Stars playing away as well. I think it's a good movie, it definitely needs a Blu-ray release, it is great that the director, and it's one of them good commentaries where the director is reflecting on it, it's not like um, Blair Witch, uh, the new Blair Witch, where the, the, the two directors are talking about the movie, and the movie hasn't even come out yet, you know, and, or like, you, you can take it as is, of that and making a movie, but when a director now sits back and reflects it years later, it, like John McTiernan doesn't really remember Predator, I don't remember making this, but then you've got stuff like they directed from um, Silver Bullet, who hasn't seen the movie in 16 years, reflecting over it, and then the director of this, um, where's the box, I got the director's name right, um, Michael Lehrman, um, you know, he reflects over it, you know, he's, he likes it, he, he had great fun, and great fun, Bruce Willis, you know, seems to be having a ball in this, having a laugh, for a lot of stunts but you know some people love it some people hate it budapest unit it was filmed in budapest um even a hudson hawk song the hudson hawk um I'm surprised bruce willis isn't rocking out some bruno on here um again though people do see it for bruce willis then people like i think the time as well die was a massive hit and die too and then this came out like what the fuck um, Eva love it here. No, I love it. I love it. You know, it, I think it is a podcast. <coughs> um, doing it, you know, it's, it seems. I mean, this is probably one film I was doing fast forward reviews, and I watched it. I would have went right. I would do a review for that. I would write it. You know what I mean? But doing podcasts, you're able to like just honestly reflect over it and don't need to do. Sorry, Bruce Willis, you know what I mean? Trivia fact, do you know there was meant to be a monkey in the film called Eddie? You know, that kind of stuff. It's great to reminisce and talk. Just absolute shit, really, in that. What podcasts are in people's heads. So, yeah. There's a lot of uh, Mr. Ed courtesy music. Oh, Mr. Ed the Horse, yeah, it was Mr. Ed the Horse. Um, New York City Mayor's Office, big thanks to them. Original soundtrack available on compact disc and cassette never ever seen in my life Hudson Hawk theme written by Bruce Willis um, Hudson Hawk theme written by Bruce Willis so Bruce Willis has got song credits right now in here as well um, colour by Technicolor like everything filmed in Panavision at the same time Dolby surround sounds obviously copyrighted TriStar Pictures in 1991 um, I don't think there's any here hidden bit on this film but that's what the podcasts are about though. waiting to fight for the very end Hudson Hawk big squirrely writing as the S curls into the W 
try a star release and the horse again. And this should be the end of the podcast, I think. Yeah. Well, this has been the podcast for Hutz and Hawk. Thank you for listening to this. Um, like, share, and subscribe to the channel. There's loads of podcasts now. Um, I am, you know, I'm really happy people are enjoying them. Thanks for listening. Goodbye.